Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Well, as you, most of you know, uh, we've got the Nevada CUSO party coming up October 9th through 11th this year. It uh, will be the second, Saturday, second weekend in uh, full weekend in October. And it starts at uh, eight o'clock local time here on Friday and it runs till uh, two o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. That gives people time to uh, get off work and go somewhere or uh, have dinner before uh, getting on the air on Friday and time to get home if you've been out in the field uh, on Sunday. Okay, it's uh, been an increasing uh, size party. We've done very, very well. We almost doubled from uh, the previous year, last year. And uh, we were a real trendsetter in using the WSJTX digital modes, uh, FT8 and FT4. Um, and now there's several other states that have followed our lead and are uh, using our same system. So it uh, gives the opportunity uh, in times of poor propagation to pick lots of contacts. We also allow the use of repeaters. We wanted to get everybody involved. And uh, if you get all your only radios a handheld, you can actually be in this contest and do pretty well. Uh, we'll talk a little more about the VHF operation here in a bit, but um, basically it's a contest everybody can be in. Uh, HF, of course, is primary uh, mode and, and single sideband on that is the uh, most used mode, but um, CW and the digital modes on, uh, on the HF also were uh, useful. Okay, it's real easy. Uh, first of all, if you're in Nevada, you are a wanted person. They're gonna be looking for you. <laughs> We want everybody to uh, come after us. Uh, you'll have the opportunity sometimes to even work a pile up where you have several people calling you at once. And this is, this is always fun. Um, and that the easy way to do is just find a clear spot on the dial and it, within your uh, limitations of your license and uh, start calling CQ Nevada QSO party. And they'll uh, start lining up for the contact. The uh, longer you stay on that particular frequency, or if you have the ability to do that, the uh, more contacts actually you're going to run because a lot of these other hams will do what we call spotting. And they will actually put your uh, call sign and the fact you're from Nevada and uh, uh, the frequency up on a uh, web log and uh, people monitor that and uh, they'll come looking for you. So it's a really a good way to, uh, to do it. Last year, there were several Nevada stations that racked up over 400 contacts on low power, 100 watts and under, and fairly modest antenna setups. Uh, there were a lot more that got on for just a couple hours here and there, and they had a lot of fun. Uh, to say our logs came up dramatically from uh, previous years from Nevada stations. And uh, one thing that I didn't see in the uh, soapbox comments from the out of state station, unlike past years, uh, there were no complaints about not having people to talk to in Nevada. Uh, however, we did not fill all the counties. And of course, there's a lot more other spots uh, in the state that uh, work out real well. You can run off a county line within 500 feet of the line. And uh, you can actually make two county connections at once. And uh, that, of course, adds up real quickly. Um, we'd like to get every uh, county uh, activated and have you know spread the fun around uh, the more stations we have the uh, the happy happier the out-of-state stations are going to be because they can only count nevada stations on the other hand 
those of us in Nevada can work everybody in the world, everybody everywhere. If you operate on one or more of the county line locations, uh, you can say make those multiple contacts with uh, one QSO and um, that. For instance, if you were happen to be on the uh, Washoe storyline, you'd be able to give out a report like 59 NVWAS, NVSTO, and uh, that would count as two QSOs in your log and their log. Um, so on. If you go to a tri corner uh, like the Lander Churchill Nye corner, you'd be giving out three at once. Uh, there is one that is four. Well, we've already had some interest in people uh, being there and uh, it's a very limited area to where you can do that uh, due to the topography. But um, the Story, Washoe, uh, Carson City and Lyon County all come together at one spot. And uh, that's, that's a lot of points all at once. But you have to be within 500 feet of the location. And this is real important. Uh, there's some that in the past of uh, people have wanted to activate that uh, they weren't quite near near enough. So uh, we ask that you uh, send in the GPS or a picture of the corner marker or something like that to uh, show that uh, where you are. Uh, the time of year is a good time of year to get out and. Uh, it's a real good uh, opportunity to see some parts of Nevada. Uh, weather's nice and hopefully it won't be quite as cold at night as it was last year, but uh, they, uh, the, the group that was out on a tri-corner that uh, got into the sub-freezing temperatures uh, survived very well and put a great score in the, uh, in the log. Um, Getting out and running around and playing like it's field day is a good way to get all of the northern counties activated. Uh, we have to depend on our folks down in Vegas to uh, cover uh, the lower end ones like Lincoln and uh, Nye and um, uh, Clark County, of course, and that. But uh, some of the ones in the center part of the state are not really a ham active. Uh, Eureka, Lander, White Pine, uh, you think Ely was. There's some that have a fair amount of hams and uh, for some reason or not, they don't seem to get on the air like Elko and uh, Humboldt, but um, we'd like to get some people out there and uh, especially if they sat on a county line. Uh, Esmeralda County is one that uh, could use more operations. Uh, W7WOW is put in a good uh, showing each year and covered quite a few uh, contacts down there, but it'd be nice to get a couple more stations. We also need stations out there that are running on CW and the digital modes. Um, the CW especially is uh, wanted by a lot of uh, contacts. We had a lot more uh, people on CW last year and uh, a lot of the foreign or out of out of state logs uh, came in with uh, CW contacts in them. Uh, the digital, uh, besides the FT8 modes, uh, you can use PSK31, uh, Ready, uh, those sort of operations. So uh, that's one thought there. The other thought is just take a nice drive and uh, well, practicing safety while driving, uh, you really don't want to be on the radio uh, uh, in that situation. Technically, it's illegal in Nevada. Uh, however, we all do it and that. But if you, you know, pull over and park, you can uh, work in several counties around the state. There's some good spots where you can pull off right by county lines and uh, get the advantage of doing the two at once and that. Uh, all the county lines in the state of Nevada have a paved road going across them. 
As I mentioned before, Nevada stations can work anyone, anywhere in the world. Uh, we had actually an entry last year from somebody in Slovenia, uh, Eastern Europe, and uh, that was kind of nice. He won the international division <laughs> in that. Um, Out-of-state stations can only work Nevada stations, so there again, we you know, want to provide the resource the number of contacts for the folks here in the state. On the HF bands, you can operate or talk to a station or make contact with the station three different times on a band. Once using a single side band, once using CW, and once using one of the digital modes. And we use the standard uh, contesting HF bands 160 through 10. Um, we do not use the WARC bands like 12 and uh, 17 and 30. Uh, they're left free for people to uh, enjoy uh, who don't uh, participate in contests. Uh, on the VHF and higher frequencies, you can only work a station once. Um, because of the uh, cross-linked and cross-banding done by the repeaters, uh, we kind of had to go with that rule and, um, and that. However, if you do make a uh, contact using a one of the odd VHF modes, or different, uh, uh, rather than odd, uh, like moon bounce, or uh, you're doing meteor scatter or that sort of thing, make a note in your soapbox so we can uh, give you a shout out for doing that. Uh, Nevada has definitely wanted uh, on moon bounce, especially some of the uh, rarer counties. And with the uh, use of the uh, WSJT modes, uh, you no longer need a 30 foot dish and 1500 watts of power. Okay, we are going to use the ARRL and RAC sections for the exchange, not the states. Um, Main part of this is because the FT8 uh, field day mode uh, uses the sections and to keep things uh, equal, we went to using uh, the ARRL uh, Radio Amateur Canada sections and that. There's 84 of them, so there's actually more multipliers in, to be had than uh, just the 50 US states and the Canadian provinces. Uh, California is a good example of what's, what this works as. There's nine sections in the state of California. Uh, if you actually put down the exchange uh, from California as CA, uh, you won't get credit for that. But if you put the proper section like Sacramento Valley for the stations up in Truckee or um, uh, Santa Clara Valley for the uh, uh, San Jose folks or LAX for Los Angeles, those will count properly. One of the key things about contesting is the ability to properly log contacts. This ability to log contacts properly and accurately uh, will carry over and help with emergency operations if you ever get involved. Um, and that. The computer is the way to go. Uh, there's a number of uh, reasons why, and we'll talk about them here. Uh, there's a great contest logger. It's free, absolutely no cost. There's no expansion you have to buy for it or annual fees or anything. It's absolutely free. It's called N1MM. And you can just Google it and they'll. Uh, take you to the download page. If you install it, you'll need to configure it for the QSO. We'll run through that at the end of this part of the presentation. And uh, using it is much easier than trying to use paper logs because it'll automatically put the time, which we use UTC, it'll automatically, if you hit switch to the radio, put the frequency down and it'll uh, spot you trying to put CA for California and uh, say, nope, that's not a valid section and cue you to uh, be able to put the correct one in. 
Also, at the end of the contest, it'll prepare your proper log for submission. We're only allowing paper logs for less than 10 contacts. Actually, we've been fortunate. We only had one last year and it had uh, two contacts on it. But um, uh, that this will be the last year we're going to allow paper logs uh, in any form. Virtually every other contest out there has gone to this rule and uh, we're just going to be like everybody else. Uh, we are doing one very nice thing. You have till the 1st of November to get your log in. Uh, again, a lot of the other contests now are going to five days or a week uh, time to get your, con your log in but we're going to still maintain it there for about three weeks to get it in. Um, and that, don't forget to do it though. Uh, we're using a format called a Cabrillo log. It's uh, been standard since about 2000 and it has all the information necessary and is uh, machine readable for scoring. And don't worry about a score on your computer uh, we score everybody the same exact way with special software and uh, so we're not doing uh, worrying about a setup program problem giving somebody a higher or lower score. Uh, actually ours tends to actually raise more scores than it lowered so uh, don't worry about having uh, uh, that. It's good for your own information to look at the score on the computer program, but uh, don't worry about it too much. You know, we will only score logs in the Cabrillo format. There's another format out there that's used for logging. Um, you'll be quite often use it to uh, transfer uh, scores from your contest program to your uh, general logging program or uh, uploading to uh, uh, Logbook of the world, LOTW, and that. Again, we're running to the end of the month, uh, November 1st, so we can try to get the results up by the end of November and uh, find out what happened. This is a far cry from uh, like field day where you turned your log in back in uh, July, June, July. And you don't see the results till December uh, when it comes out in QST. So we're uh, trying to get it out as fast as possible. Okay, there's a couple of uh, changes we've made to uh, FT8 and FT4 this year. First of all, we're asking everyone to use the frequencies about four kilohertz up from the uh, standard. So on 40 meters, you would be on uh, 7.0 Four or seven eight, seven oh, seven eight, and uh, this will be a good spot to be able to locate the Nevada station and avoid those who are not using the field day overlay. Uh, if they're not using the field day overlay, they won't be able to give the correct exchange, and you'll sit there and run back and forth and back and forth, and nobody seems to budge. Um, trying to get it. I found last year that by putting out uh, what I'm calling CQ about every uh, fifth or sixth uh, CQ I'd put out a uh, line that just said uh, www.nvqso.com which is the website for the contest on the free message and that uh, people got the idea and they would go look at the uh, look at that web page and see, oh, I need to turn to uh, the field day overlay. So uh, it's just a little tip that we've come up with. The other change is we've now have coding for all the county lines and corner locations in the state. Uh, if you go to the page that shows counties, uh, at the bottom there, there's a tab that takes you over to the FT8. Um, numbers and uh, it's going to make it a lot easier to mark all those other spots. 
in the past, uh, you had to make multiple QSOs to account for the different counties, and this will make it easier on everybody. Um, basically, uh, if you're out there doing digital on a three county corner, uh, every QSO is going to give you nine points because it's three uh, multiplier for the uh, being in the digital mode and the three contacts. So each contact works is worth nine points. And that uh, makes you jump up pretty good. However, making uh, six points for a single sideband isn't too shabby either And that. And basically the scoring uses the QSO points, which would be one point for a VHF, two points for uh, uh, voice uh, HF, and three points for digital HF and CW. And it multiplies that by the number of the sections. And you can get the sections on every band, DX countries, and also Nevada sections. You can work all the Nevada stations. And so there's another 17. Uh, when you add all these multipliers up times all the bands, uh, uh, you can uh, end up with 847 possible multipliers. And of course, that would take you 847 contacts at least. And you square that number and you get a huge looking number. And uh, that um, means we can have some some pretty big scores put in last year. Uh, we broke a million points on one uh, multi-multi station Tom was running uh, up there on um, the Comstock Memorial Station in Story County. And he actually broke a million points last year. So uh, there's a good opportunity uh, to uh, put in a big score for Nevada. And it's kind of fun. So where do you operate? Um, during the day, usually 20 meters has been the best for contacts across the, uh, the North America. Uh, early morning hours will do well in that area and we'll get into some DX. Uh, late afternoon and then all night also will works pretty good on 40. Uh, Nighttime is probably your best for 160 and 80 and that. And there's been scattered openings on uh, 15 and 10. Um, one thing you might want to try, especially if you're going out in the field, is setting up an NVIS antenna for 80 and 40 meters. Uh, the near vertical incident sky wave antenna basically shoots your signal straight up in the air and then uh, it comes right back down in about a 300, 400 mile circle. And this gets to the close end one, so you'd be skipping over with normal propagation. Uh, one thing that was noticed on the logs is Nevada stations had relatively few Nevada stations in their logs. Uh, I know there were some pretty heroic uh, operations out there. The uh, Tri-County line uh, operation about the center part of the state never heard them and uh that so you know basically we're, we're missing our close in folks and this would be a good opportunity to try that uh they're pretty easy to set up you can uh, uh set up an nvis relatively easy um let's see i thought i talk about that in a minute here. But uh, if you can pick up some uh, electric fence uh, plastic stakes, uh, fairly relatively inexpensively at the farm supply store, and that'll hold it about four feet off the ground. Uh, you can put a 160 meter dipole up and tune it uh, with a tuner on the 80 and 40 and uh, get a, a lot of use out of that type of antenna. Also, the cloud warmer type uh, works very well for emergency services when you're you know, working on a local emergency. Okay, for the VHF frequencies, getting high is the name of the game. If you can get on top of a hill, that's great. 
virtually all the uh, major repeaters in the state are on mountaintops. And as you may know, Nevada is the most mountainous state in the country. Um, you get on top of one and you can see. Recently, I uh, heard a fellow up on top of the Arc Dome on the Toyabe Range uh, south of Austin. And he was coming into the Mount Rose repeater better than a lot of stations get into Mount Rose here in the valley. Uh, it's a direct line of sight. Because it's up there over 10,000 feet in the center of the state, it also sees mountaintops with repeaters on them down in southern Nevada, the Las Vegas area. It uh, sees all the stuff in northern Nevada pretty much and even sneaks out of state into uh, a couple of tall mountains there in southern Utah or uh, southern uh, Idaho and over into the Wasatch Front above uh, Salt Lake City. So a pretty good shot up from a mountaintop. Um, the Arc Dome is a little rugged hike getting up there. It's got a tremendous view. I've been up there and that, but there's other uh, mountains uh, that have roads and are easier to access. Uh, even if you just go up and park up in the parking lot there of the Slide Mountain Ski Area, uh, that'll give you a, a lot more repeater coverage. Uh, the VHF folks have probably the best chance of getting the most Nevada counties between the length repeater systems and the uh, ability to see repeaters in these other areas, uh, that'll really help um, in that. And don't overlook the uh, D-Star Fusion DMR ability to link out of area. Uh, yes, those contacts are good. Uh, when you are on the repeaters, however, don't break into nets. Uh, they, they, they have a purpose and uh, you don't want to interfere with those. And uh, don't sit and just monopolize a repeater. Uh, give it a break so other stations can come in and uh, do the job. But um, actually, the last couple of years, extra class hams have been the ones actually winning the VHF uh, uh, end of the game. And uh, we need to get the techs out there and show the uh, show those extras how it's really done. The big thing is to get on the air. There are gonna be a lot of hams out there that wanna work the Nevada stations and the more the merrier. Uh, there'll be lots of activities on the band. Uh, Arizona, Pennsylvania, I believe South Dakota, are also having their uh, QSO parties the same weekend. So there'll be people looking for them. And I heard they'll hear all these Nevada stations and want to talk to us too. Um, I'm sure to give the proper report. Our signal report is uh, five nine uh, plus the uh, county. And uh, in contesting, we use the five nine or five nine nine for digital and CW as a standard, even though you probably have to get them to repeat three times to uh, be able to copy everything. Um, all the computer logging programs out there default to 5.9 and you have to backspace or whatever to get in and make the signal change and people aren't real happy with that idea. So uh, we use the standard 5.9 for uh, contesting. So a report would go uh, like that. If I've talked to somebody, I'd go, you're 5'9 in Pershing County, Nevada, November Victor, Papa Echo Romeo. That way they, they actually know I'm in a county in Nevada and they have the proper exchange, which is the NVPER for Pershing County and uh, that. So, we're now going to go and switch over to show you how to set up N1 and WSJT for the contest logging and that. And I really, really hope to work a lot of you during the uh, contest on several bands uh, and that. Okay, let's uh, drop this one.
Jim. This is Barry. Case success to you when you're doing that. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if you said this. You might have. Um, did you show the mapping, or will you show the mapping of the um, the uh, 17 counties with the numbers, like the WSJT thing? Okay, yeah, you uh, go to the um, uh, nvqso.com website, and you just click on the counties. There's a tab up there, and it'll show the, the first page will show you all the, uh, the main counties. And then at the bottom of that page, there's a uh, link that takes you over and shows you the, um, the number of abbreviations for all the county lines and corners. And now we'll get to that in a minute. I've got this one up now. Great, okay, you. to set up WSJTX, you need to go to File, down here to Settings, and you want to go over to this Advanced tab. And it's a Special Operating Activity. We click on that. You want to use the Field Day Overlay. And then you come over here in the box and you type in your uh, uh, the number there from the FT8. And in my case, it's going to be uh, 14 Alpha, and the section is Nevada. And I'm now set to go to work the contest. Because I, in a contest, it pulls up a separate log. This happens to be left over from a previous one. And so you're going to want to take, go up here to file again, and it says reset Cabrillo log. And you're going to click. Hopefully you've saved it ahead of time. And now it cleaned out the log and it's ready to roll again. Uh, you cannot run WSJT and N1MM at the same time. And you don't want to use the uh, facility in, in, in the uh, N1MM that allows you to start WSJT. Uh, it will not work and provide the proper exchange. So we have to exit out of, uh, out of that. And then we'll come back here and pick up N1MM. We'll go through how to configure that. And, uh, takes a second to load. It's telling me I don't have the radio attached, which is not a problem. And it brings up my N1MM screen. Now to be able to configure it, uh, first of all, it's telling me that I have an updated 72 days. And it tells me that uh, it's available. You definitely want to make sure that you've uh, updated your program within the last week. They come out every Tuesday with an update. They catch bugs. And uh, we're going to do it live here so you get to see how long this takes. I'm using the defaults. It's uploading all those programs. And we're back, finished, and we'll restart again. It tells you what was done. and. Uh, gets you up and running. So it's not a real big thing to be able to update it. So go ahead and be sure you do it. Now we need to set up for the, this contest. So you go to, uh, well, first of all, you take a look at config and make sure that your station data is correct. Um, right now I'm set up to be in uh, here in, in Reno. I'll change that for Pershing County when I go out there. Uh, put the club down, Sierra Nevada ARS, and uh, your email address. Email address is important. I'll have that in there. Uh, come on. So we come over. Big again.
Want to make sure you got your radio set up. And that it has a, a drop down list that'll show lots of different radios and that so you can get it configured to be able to uh, hook to your radio and that'll automatically get the frequency, the mode, and uh, the uh, don't worry about the WSGT uh, set up there because um, you're not going to use that with the N1MM. So we'll go ahead and Save that. And because I'm not hooked to the radio, it's telling me things aren't correct here. So I'm in manual mode right now. File. Okay. Basically, we're going to want to open a new log. So we'll click on that. And it comes to whatever what was the last one that I ran, which happened to be field day. So you click on that and it shows all these contests. And uh, we got, come up here. And where are we? QSO party is what you're looking for. You click on the QSO party. And uh, shows the log type. And then you come down for the log type for the QSO party. And you look down here and scroll on down. And lo and behold, there's Nevada. Now this will set it up so it'll log the exchange properly. Uh, you want to set your operator settings. I'm single op. Uh, I'm going to work all bands. Uh, I am going to be running low power, however. It defaults to, low, to high power and assisted. Uh, so I just do it off. Okay, mode. I'm going to be running all three modes. Actually, I probably won't be running CW, but that's the only way they don't have a, CW, a single side band and digital. So you have to use a three bander. Okay, I'm not assisted. We're not scoring on that, being assisted or not. So everybody can use assisted. I'm using one transmitter. And uh, no, I, correction, I'm using two because I've got a VHF radio and my uh, Elecraft. My Sen Exchange. Okay, I'm going to be Nevada, P E R Pershing, and uh, that. Now it's a fixed station via mobile, portable station. We call that an expedition. Uh, it's probably your best one to use there. Uh, Rover Unlimited, if you're going to run around mobile and operate out of several different counties, just basically you're going to be stopped and put up an antenna quickly. Uh, we don't have a school or headquarters. Yeah, so basically you're going to either be a fixed, which I am, uh, portable, Rover, or Expedition. Those are the allowable classes. And that. So that should uh, be, and then be sure to save it. It lets you, it lets you know that you're, you've done it right, you're an in-state participant, and uh, otherwise prompts you to go back and check if you're out of state. Okay. Well, that's pretty much all there is to getting it set up and uh, I'm ready to start logging a contact. Um, is 7TA. 
you hit automatic, you put in the five nine, and uh, it'll be N V W A S for Washoe County. It shows that I haven't said what I'm talking to, so we're going to go to 40 voice. Yeah, because I didn't do that first. Yeah. It always happens when I do this first. Uh, W7TA. Tab, 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 tab. W. NVW. I can type and talk at the same time, you know. <laughs> I have trouble doing that sometimes in the contest. Uh, so we're on 40 meter voice. Green shows that I need him everywhere, but we'll just put him in log here on uh, that. He now appears down here in the log, lower sideband, Washoe County section. So that's really how easy it is to use. I have some other windows open. I have uh, the uh, gray line indicator lets me see where's daylight and where's dark. Uh, it keeps track of the score. I actually made four points on that contact. It also shows uh, the information. Um, and it puts them over here on a dupe sheet. So later on, when I start having hundreds of contacts, I can either take a quick glance or I can type it in again. Uh, let me type it in again. W7TA. It shows it's a dupe. And uh, at that point, I would either be able to tune off or I can do a wipe, Control W or click down here on wipe and start again. Now, let's say I switch to 20 meters. This time around, it says, yes, I definitely need him because he's still in the green. And, uh, oh, <laughs> I'm making CW contact. I... Oh no, never mind. Um, it shows I definitely need him. And uh, it shows that I've already worked him properly here on 40 meters. So I need him on 20. And because I've worked him before, it automatically filled out the exchange. So this can be helpful. Now, if it's a rover station, you uh, want to be careful and make sure that. Uh, you've got the new county punched in. And again, we'll hit enter and put them in the log on a separate band. So that's really all it is to it. And uh, it's easy to use in that. So I'll uh, turn it back there to Barry. And if there are any questions, uh, I'll be here. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, I'd like to just bring up uh, the county, the uh, County list here that uh, somebody else was asking on the chat. So this you should be able to see it now. This is on the uh, NBQSO counties. For those that are that Jim was talking about, for those that are operating a WSJT, here's the mapping. There's the numbers. So um, the Pershing was the 14, I believe. So if he's in Pershing, so if he's on CW, if I have this correct, Jim, tell me if I'm correct. In CW and phone, you're going to say NVPER. But in WSJT, you're going to say 14A. That's the mapping, correct? That's correct. Yeah. So uh, very brilliant, by the way. Uh, Go ahead. Scroll down a little further. OK. <laughs> Click that. Uh-huh. So now we got the two and three counting lines. And four, I think they're four. Yeah, four counting lines. That's something new this year, right, Jim? That is new this year. And that. And these are listed in the uh, alphabetical order of the counties um, in the, you know, starting it out. The, the, the counties themselves are not alphabetical, but uh, so on the three county, the, uh, the uh, first alphabetical character will determine where it's in the list. So that's why Clark's, and then we jump to Lincoln and Eureka, and then back down here, we got Churchill 
down here a little lower. But um, we have all the three county and two county and the one four county location. So this will yeah, help you. When is you're this the third up. year or the fourth year that we've been doing it through SNARS for the NVQS law? I think it's the fourth year now. Yeah, I think it is too. It's come a long way. Um, thanks to Jim, um, who's spearheading this. Um, it's growing, growing each year. And, um, and uh, you know, I do want to give a plug what Jim said. We're probably maybe the only or one of the only QSL parties that allows not only VHF, but repeaters. I've gotten on many times, both DMR and on analog and maybe this year Fusion, and I've talked to a lot of guys. And there's a lot of one-ups, so it's a good way to, to get the word out. Do you all want to take any Q&A uh, at this point directly related to NBQSO? If anybody has any questions, that works, Jim? Sure. Okay, so let me just do this. Let me make sim it simple. Uh, only if it's the NBQSO, we'll talk about the rest of the club, club business or other Q, uh, questions after. So if anybody has a question for Jim regarding the NBQSO, uh, you can just unmute yourself now. While we're waiting for that, let me just ask a question that I'm sure you'll know the answer. Can you give us an idea, for instance, last year, how many, uh, if you knew off the top of your head, Jim, how many, um, how many uh, Nevada and maybe non-Nevada stations uh, submitted their logs, any, any sense of that? It would have to be accurate, but the ballpark maybe? I believe we had about uh, 40 Nevada stations submitting logs, and we had about 100 grand total coming out of the rest of the country. Uh, a lot of those out of the area were, were, had just had one or two contacts, but because they distributed them themselves among the various states and other sections, um, I think I, in one it, one instance, I got to hand out a second place uh, certificate. Everybody else ended up with a first place certificate, which looks nice on the wall. Uh, you know, we, we tend to print the uh, the, the uh, score in fairly small letters and uh, your name in first place uh, in big letters. So <laughs> it makes a nice wall hanger. Yeah, really good. Uh, now, okay, I reset the unmuting. Uh, Bogdan, did you want to say something? Yeah, I'm curious if the, let's say, the digital modes create an unfair advantage because everybody's on the same frequency and the exchanges are every 15 seconds versus somebody, I mean, people being spread on a band and trying to chase down like in you know, other parties. What's your experience with that? Um, really, we haven't had that much of a problem. People generally will spread out. Uh, of course, the FT8 and FT4 being up four kilohertz, uh, that's not a problem because you can run about 50 uh, contacts at once in that uh, three kilohertz area um, and that. But generally, we haven't had a problem with Nevada stations uh, getting on top of each other. Uh, usually, the best bet is to find a clear piece of air and uh, operate there in the general area. Uh, it's probably best to stay in the general class area. However, uh, don't overlook going down in the uh, advanced and extra class uh, to pick up some contacts. Really interesting questions because if I compare, say, this QSO party to some of the really big ones like the California QSO party, it's small, relatively speaking. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if there is or is not, but um, what I do notice is if, if people get on enough and you call enough CQs and people go, what is this thing? And you tell them what it is, they'll come back to you. So, you know, we're in the early, Jim's way shake has said, we're in the early days of this, of getting on, on the map of, uh, of QSO parties. And isn't Nevada, just as a general state, isn't it one of the more rare states, uh, Jim, to, for people to work? Yes, and especially the counties. Uh, you know, a lot of these counties, uh, rural counties, don't have a lot of operators or active operators. And um, so the county hunters jump on these things. They'll uh, have their people out uh, looking real hard. Uh, Lander County, Eureka County, White Pine County uh, are all highly, highly wanted. Um, even Humboldt and uh, uh, 
uh, Elko are hard to get. Uh, I've uh, kind of put Pershing County on the map a little bit, so <laughs> uh, that, but um, and Tom up there, uh, K5RC, has uh, definitely populated everybody's log with uh, Story County, but uh, trying to get out in the other areas is, is a big help. And as they say, you'll get spotted on the uh, uh, cluster networks. And uh, once that happens, you'll find you'll have a steady straight. You can run the uh, run the frequency. Yeah, you know, if we just look at pure population, there's something about something like about three million uh, people residents in Nevada, of which approximately two or maybe one point eight to two million of that is in the metropolitan areas of the northern Nevada and the southern Nevada. So that means you got about a million spread out into, gosh, what, 14, 13, 14 counties. So it, it's, it, it's spread out. Anybody else have any questions or thoughts they want to uh, ask? Go ahead and uh, just unmute yourself. You know, I, I'll just mention, uh, going back to the VHF thing, it's unique. Uh, you know, I would say virtually all, if not almost all the others, don't do it. And Jim was brilliant in putting this together because you'll get a lot of activity. So on the SNARS link repeater system, it's a great place. Of course, all the technicians can get on there too. Um, I've been on DMR this year, I'll get on some fusion. And uh, it's, it's, it's just fun. And sometimes you talk to people and, um, they go, what is this? So you're educating them and getting involved. Okay, one last call before we end this uh, presentation. Any other comments, questions for Jim or anybody about the NVQSO? I got something to say. Go so for it, Wes. Say. Please. Let's start with Wes and we'll go to Ed after. Go ahead, Wes. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, I thought it was three, but it is four, uh, four contests that's been going on so far. Uh, my question is, you know, I mean, I was, I've been up in the mountains where, where you can, couldn't get nobody in the, in the uh, uh, anywhere in the state. You know, we had more people coming in from the outside uh, that we make a contact. We couldn't make anything local, though. You know what I'm saying? To, you know, I mean, yes, the idea is to contact us, but we like to contact other places, you know. And uh, anywhere you were, you either got some people or you didn't get nobody. You know what I'm saying? And uh, <laughs> uh, was it last year, I think? It says, of course, I think uh, Diana was out there. I don't know how she did on the Nevada context, but I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, they made a few contacts, but uh, most of them probably outside the area. Uh, uh, Diana, what do you, what, what'd you come up with? Unmute yourself. Here we go. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, but my recollection is I had a lot of people out of state, not many people in state. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's my, my experience too. And I said, I like to make more contacts in my own state and that's not happening. I, I don't know if it's just, we didn't have enough operators in the state working or what other than the people who are in for the contest. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, just, it's nice to get the outside states, but you know, I like to, I like to be able to work them. And like last year, we, didn't, we heard, I heard nobody from the South End. Is, is that hopefully that's gonna be corrected. Um, and uh, people get involved. Of course, we got to leave it up to Tony down there to kind of, you know, jazz it up some and uh, start talking about it. Uh, maybe we'll get some context there. But um, yeah, I don't know. It just, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm most likely not trusting the weather or whatever, you know. Um, I'm, I'll probably be home again this year uh, working out of my out of my shack. But uh, uh, I, I mean, I look forward to a good contest, but uh, you know, like my, not a desperation <laughs> towards the end there. I, I started getting on VHF, UHF, and everything else, uh, anything I can throw at it. So, uh, uh, and then this is it. It, well, it is what it is. You know, you just, you take what you got. And, uh, but, you know, like on, on the repeaters, the repeater system, like the link system, I was listening. I had, I had all my radios going, you know, so, uh, I was listening and I, I didn't hear too much activity on it. Um, I'd like to hear more. I mean, if you're not a, if you're not a general where you can't get on HF, you can damn sure get on six, uh, you get on 10 meters for sure, but, uh, uh, and play. And, uh, yeah, um, 
I know where this uh, this is a this is a new startup kind of a what uh, uh, competition on this particular Nevada Cusa party, but you know, since we don't activate, uh, we don't get out there and talk it up and put it out there uh, and let people know that we hey we're we're alive and kicking over here. Come talk to us. Um, you know, even if you make it just one or two contacts, you know, you're doing stuff for, for the, uh, the, the the state useful party. So anyway, uh, that's all I got to say. I just I'm rattling on here. So yeah, um, I hope I hope it's a good one this year. I really do. That's really yeah. good. It's really yeah. good. Before before I go back over to Ed, I'll just make a couple of comments. Uh, one of them is um, getting the word out. So Wes, you're the net manager for the new net. Let's get stuff probably on the uh, new net. Um, and then uh, I'll work with Howie to get some, some we'll, for the newsletter for next time, in November. And uh, this recording will get online and we'll talk to Jim about ways of pub publicizing it and, and getting that out. The other two things I wanna say is that Jim mentioned the NBIS. If you, if you can put up your another antenna, depending if you're out in the field or at home, the NBIS, which is lower to the ground, will help more close in. And then the thing that uh, Wes mentioned, and I just want to reiterate it also, there's a contest within the contest, and that is, it's an inner contest, if I have this correction, help me, of Nevada to Nevada. Do I have it right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that we just, uh, in looking through the logs and analyzing it, uh, there were very few, um, some of the contesting type stations like myself and uh, K7XC and uh, even um, Tom up there uh, on the Virginia Highlands. All our antennas are optimized for going out great distances and uh, which was great for working the world. However, um, it was hard. I did get a few Las Vegas stations in and uh, I got a few contacts on the uh, link repeater system. I think I got Wes uh, <laughs> and uh, that. So yeah, it's uh, having uh, the ability to work locally on HF uh, is really could be helpful in getting more Nevada stations in, in the Nevada logs. Thanks. Hey, Ed, KJ7DHY, go ahead. Yeah, so this question is for Jim. Um, so you mentioned uh, to Mark uh, club in your um, station setup. Um, how did you want to state that? Is it spelled out? Is it just snars? Is it uh, Nevada snars? Okay, the correct way to put it in uh, is the is Sierra Nevada A R S. Sierra Nevada A R S. Um, that's good there, and it's good for all the ARRL contests. If you're going to get into a uh, uh, on some of the other contests, like the CQ contest, uh, they want the whole thing Sierra Nevada Amateur Radio Society spelled out. Right now, uh, we're not a big enough uh, contest club to be able to use uh, SNARS uh, like some of the other clubs, uh, like uh, YC. Uh, C yeah, YCCC, Yankee Clippers Contest Club, back east, or uh, NCCC, Northern California Contest Club, uh, that. So we, we still have to spell it out till we get a lot more people active and uh, putting us more on the contact map. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, before we close, Jim, uh, I want to ask you, uh, can you just speak for a minute about the gentleman that comes down from, I think it's Oregon or Washington and comes down and operates down here? That's interesting. Okay. Uh, the fellow actually won out of state uh, last year, uh, is up in the Dallas, Oregon. And unfortunately, he had an auto accident a couple of weeks before the contest, so he didn't come down. But he was highly active on FT8. I think he worked every FT8 using station in the uh, state. Uh, and that was a lot of points. Uh, he also was able to get in being a little further out uh, to most of the county operations. And he put in a really respectable score. His score was actually better than about half, over half the uh, Nevada station. So 
uh, he is looking at coming down this year. Um, he's going to want to run a, a county line operation somewhere. And uh, I'll be chatting with him here shortly. But uh, yeah, he, uh, he did, a, did a really bang up job. He was an order of magnitude above the next uh, out of state station. A good final call for anybody that wants to ask a question or make a content con yeah let's say a contact any, anything you want to say just unmute yourself I'm not hearing anything thank you very much jim for that presentation we'll get it up online and it can be available for other people we hope to see everybody in the nevada queue so um party tells the dates one more time well thank you very much and uh uh hope uh, we'll see you all there and get out and just have fun and make a few contacts you know uh, some of us uh, are heavily involved in BIC BIC which is butt in the chair and we'll operate for most of the contest but uh, it's the folks who get out there and make an hour or two here and there uh, that really can make this contest good for everybody thank you and yeah, and it's the 11th and 12th, is that correct, of October? Do we have the right dates? It's like, it's <laughs> yeah, I have to pull my screen up and check. <laughs> it's nvqso.com. See you in the contest, 7-3 from Nevada.